Hello and welcome to Skills and Automation. My name is Ash and in today's video, we're going to cover two intermediate topics using arrays within a dictionary and using dictionaries within a dictionary. I have received a few requests to dive a bit further into the land of dictionaries. So here we go. This video will require a base understanding of dynamic arrays and dictionaries. Now a dictionary can hold key item pairs and we can use a key to retrieve an item. In most cases, an item would be some text or a number, but we can even store an array or a dictionary as an item and associate it with a key. This is what we'll be looking at in this video. A dictionary with items that are just text and numbers on its own is very powerful, but feeding arrays or dictionaries into a dictionary allows us to extract even more value from a traditional dictionary. For example, using arrays within a dictionary is like creating a set of hybrid arrays. Use case would be to achieve complex data transformations with a lot fewer steps. And a use case for dictionaries within a dictionary would be to create a multi-layered lookup or rather a lookup within a lookup, which is pretty cool. So stay tuned for that. First, we'll look at a scenario where we'll use arrays within a dictionary. Here, we have the input sheet, the store name in column A and the region in column B. The region repeats multiple times while the store name is unique. So there's basically a many to one relationship where there are many stores to one region. And in the output sheet, we want to group the data on region and populate each store vertically below each region. Let's play out the macro, hit play. And this is how our result should look like. We have the regions in row one and the stores have been populated vertically. We don't know how many stores there are per region beforehand. And we don't even know how many regions there are. So our code is going to be completely dynamic. Okay. Let's build this logic out. We're going to refer to the worksheets using their worksheet code names. Let's create a sub. Let's clear out the contents in the output sheet first. And we place the value region into cell A1 in the output sheet. This is going to be the row header on the first row. Let's declare arrays to hold our input and output data. To populate the input array, we'll get the last used row on that sheet. And let's fill in the contents of the input sheet minus the headers into the input array. So we're excluding the header row. Let's create a dictionary object. Now let's come to the input sheet for a bit. We will add the region names as keys into our dictionary. Keys within a dictionary are always unique. So effectively, we'll be creating a unique list of regions. Now one region can have multiple stores. So for each region, we will create an array of stores and store it as an item against that region key. Okay, back to our code. Let's create variables to hold the store name and region. We will declare a variable for the array of the store names as well and one iteration variable and finally one variable to hold the length of the array. I'll explain the rationale for it once we reach that section of the code. Now let's iterate over the input array. So from the lower bound to the upper bound, we'll save the store name from column one into a variable and the region name from column two. Now let's introduce a logic to add the region as keys. If the region doesn't already exist in our list of dictionary keys, then we will add it as a key. So if not the region key exists, then we'll do something. And if it does, we will do something else. So let's first do the part where the region doesn't already exist. We know that the region will go in as a key. And what we can do is add the store name into an array and add that array as the item. To add a value into an array, we need to first declare the size of the array. So read them. We're going to use the store name array. And initially it's going to be a size of one. When we are adding the region as a key for the first time, then the store name will go in as position one into the array. So the value at index one of the array will be the store name. And let's add the key and the item to the dictionary. So the key is the region and the item is the array, which currently only has one value in it. Now let's move on to the else section. Here we have the condition where the region already has been added as a key through a previous iteration of this for loop. So now we'll simply add the store name to the array that already exists as an item against the region key. Well, not so simply. There are a few steps here. We will first create a new array. We'll extract the item array that was saved against the region key and we'll assign this item array to a new array. Next, we'll increase the size of our new array by one to make space for the new store name. We will then add the store name into the last slot of the array. And finally, we'll replace the current item array with a newly created array. Well, that's quite a mouthful. So let's code this out step by step. First, to create our new array, we need to know the length of the array. The length is the same as the length of the item array that's saved against the region key. 
So the length of the array is basically the upper bound of the item array, which can be accessed using the region key. Next, let's declare the size of the array, which we've already found out in the previous line. And we're just reusing the array variable name that we had created earlier. Let's assign the item array to this new array. Next, we'll add the store name from the data row that we are currently in. We need to increase the size of array by one to make space for the store name. And we want to keep or preserve the values that already exist within the array. So this time, we'll use the readm preserve statement. So readm preserve and adding one to the total length of the current array. Let's come up a bit. Next, let's append the store name to the last index number of the array. So the last index number is this and our store name is saved in this variable. And finally, let's add the new array as the item against the region key. By doing this, we have effectively replaced the previous version of the store name array with the newly updated version of the same array. And that's it for populating the contents of our input sheet into a dictionary. Now we need to populate or output the contents of this dictionary onto the output sheet. So let's get out of the for loop and iterate over the dictionary. The region keys will go into row one and the current column. And these are our region keys. Let's populate the store names from the item array vertically below each region key. For that, we need to find the length of the item array that is stored against each region key. So the length of the item array is the upper bound of the item array. And we can directly paste the entire array onto the worksheet of our output array range to that of the array. Notice we are resizing the rows and not the columns. Now remember that these are one dimensional arrays where the data is stored horizontally, but we want to output the data vertically. So the size of the range needs to equal the transposed version of our array. And we can transpose our array using the worksheet function transpose. Let's go on to a new line. And what are we transposing? Well, we are transposing the item array. And this should be enough to output the entire contents of the dictionary onto the output sheet. Let's save and test it out. So our output sheet is currently blank. Let's play the macro. That looks good. Everything seems to have populated correctly. So one thing I'm going to check quickly is that the number of stores is 21, which matches our input sheet. Awesome. One thing that is missing is the horizontal store name headers in the first column. So let's add that as well. We need to know the last row of the output sheet. Let's loop over the first column and add the value store appended to an incrementing number. So the value is store and we'll just add our iteration variable to it. Okay, let's play this out once more. Go back to our output sheet and that looks good as well. So that was a demo about using an array within a dictionary. Now let's move on to adding dictionaries as items within a parent dictionary. In order to talk about dictionaries within dictionaries, I had to think about a viable data set and scenario. So understanding this data set is crucial to understanding the code. I would not recommend skipping this part. On a high level, our objective is to highlight the store name and region pair that doesn't match the official pairing that's defined in our master data sheet. So this is a kind of a discrepancy check. Let's dive into this a bit further. So here we have a data set of invoices. Let's say that this list has been generated from an invoicing application where the user manually types in the invoice details. Let's look at columns E and F where we have the store name and region. Let's look at our master data sheet. This is how we have saved our region to store mappings. In column A, we have the region name and column B onwards has each store that exists within the region. Let's go back to our invoicing sheet. Our problem statement is that the user may have entered the store name against the wrong region. We have to validate this store name region pair against our master data. And if it is incorrect, we need to flag it by highlighting the cells red. Let's run the macro to show you what I mean. This is our macro. Let's play it out. We have some cells which have been highlighted red. So this means that this store HiFi New Windsor does not belong to the East region. Let's confirm that HiFi New Windsor actually belongs to the region north. So our code is working correctly. Okay, let's build out this logic. Let's go to the VB editor. Let's create a sum. Let's first check out the master data worksheet. We are going to create a dictionary based on this data. A dictionary takes a key and an item. The key must be unique. 
So in our case, we will create a dictionary where the region is the key and we can store one item against each key. So here for each region key, we are going to put each stored into a separate single dictionary and save it as an item against that region key. How will this help us? Let's go to the invoice sheet. After we've populated the master data worksheet into a dictionary, we're going to iterate over the invoice sheet. And for each row, we're going to check whether the region exists within the keys of the parent dictionary that we have created from the master data sheet. If it does, we will check whether the store name exists within the dictionary of the store names that we have saved as an item against the region key. If it doesn't exist, then this store region pair mapping is incorrect and we will mark it as red. So back to our code, we're going to move a bit faster in this section. Let's grab the last used row and last used column from the master data worksheet. Let's create the dictionary object. Let's declare an object variable to hold the store name dictionary, but we won't create this dictionary just yet. We will do this at runtime as we loop over the columns. Let's declare some string variables to hold the store name and region. Let's declare two iteration variables for our loops and let's create the outer loop first. We'll assign the value from column one of the master data worksheet to the region variable name. Now for each region, we will create a second for loop where we iterate horizontally to the right and populate each store name into a dictionary called dict store name. Let's create the dictionary now. And remember, we don't need to declare it as we had already done that outside the for loop. So for each region, we will loop horizontally from the second column to the last used column. Let's assign the store name, which is based on the current row and the current column of the master data worksheet. Now we'll iterate from left to right as long as there is a value in the cell. If there is no value found, we will assume that we have reached the end of our horizontal list and exit the inner loop. So if the store name is blank, then we'll exit just the inner for loop and move on to the next region. Okay, let's populate the store name dictionary. The key will be the store name and we don't need an item. So we'll just leave it as zero. Okay, that's it for the inner for loop. Let's come out of it. By the end of this loop, the store name dictionary will have populated with all the store names for the current region. And now let's populate the region dictionary, which is the parent dictionary. The key for the region dictionary will be the region and the item will be the store name dictionary. And before we move to the next iteration of the outer loop, let's release the store name dictionary so that we can use it in the next iteration of the loop. Okay, now let's come out of the outer loop, make some space here. Till now, we have populated the contents of the master data worksheet into a dictionary. Now let's loop over the invoice worksheet and check whether the store name and region pair entered by a user is correct or not. So let's find the last row of the invoice worksheet and begin our for loop from the second row onwards. Let's grab the values from the sixth and fifth columns and put them into the region and store name variables. Now let's first check whether the region from the invoice sheet exists within the dictionary we had already created above, which was based on the regions in the master data worksheet. So if the region key exists, then then we'll enter into the logic area of our if statement. Next, we'll check whether the store name from the invoice sheet exists within the dictionary of the master data store names that were saved within the item against the region key. But we can't check it directly. We first have to initialize a dictionary object using the region dictionary item. So we can grab the item using the key as a parameter. Now we'll check whether this invoice store name doesn't exist within the dictionary of master data store names. So if it doesn't exist, then, well, then we'll give the current cells in column E and F a red background color. So the range of cells from the current row in column five and column six, color index three represents the color red. And let's come out of the if statement. We'll clear the dictionary object so that it can be used in the next iteration of the for loop. And that's it. So that's how our invoice sheet works right now. Let's play out the macro back to our invoice sheet and all the invalid store name region pairs have been highlighted red. Whew. All right. Hope you learned some new things here today. If you did, please do like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.